Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichuk here. I want to touch on uh, attention deficit disorder. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just called brain fog, minor cognitive impairment if you're older. And, and, and what is this really? So your autonomic nervous system is part of the nervous system that regulates how your organs work, your metabolism, your immune system, kind of makes the whole machine work in a coordinated fashion. And it controls blood pressure and heart and your, uh, blood pressure and your heart rate. When people get a simple concussion, one of the common things they experience is they can't generate the proper blood pressure in their head. And that leads to an inadequate amount of oxygen flowing into the brain. It's, here's how oxygen in the brain works. You have red blood cells, you breathe, they carry your oxygen. They fill up in your lungs, you gotta push it up in your brain, and then that flows into your head at the right pressure. If you don't have enough pressure, sometimes you stand up and you're like, whoa. What happens is your pressure just went and dip like that. Because you, you've gotta increase your pressure against gravity. And even if you don't have that, you could stand up and, and um, because you can't generate the right pressure, now you have just a little bit less oxygen than your brain needs to fully function, okay? This is attention deficit disorder. This is what most people talk about with brain fog or poor memory. Actually, a lot of people are just kind of tired a lot and they don't know why. They have low pressure in the brain. If you're in the elderly, they call it minor cognitive impairment. They're all cerebral hypoperfusion, brain low pressure, okay? And they come from a, it comes from a variety of injuries. And when we say injury, most people, and rightly so, will think of like a physical injury, which we call a concussion. So concussion is you damage neurons, you have some symptoms that last for a couple days, but you do not bleed in the brain, okay? So your MRI scan will look normal. Now you can have what we call subconcussive events, which are injury, physical injury, damaged neurons, but you don't have these persistent symptoms for a couple days, but they too are causing damage. Um, other injuries are the immune system, okay? You can get it from simple surgeries, fractures of bigger bones, um, vaccines at times, and COVID gives you a whopper of a concussion, inflammatory concussion. And then emotions can do it. And actually, I think the emotions are the most dangerous ones because they're, it's the kind of concussion and, and cellular damage that can kill you. So the worst case support, uh, worst case scenario is a Takasubu event but known in the elderly is dying of a broken heart. So grandma dies and grandpa's grief is so intense, he'll sustain an injury in the brain that you can see in a microscope, okay? These emotional injuries cause tissue damage that you can see in a microscope and it's so bad he can't make his frail heart pump correctly and he dies. If you're younger, people have transient heart failure, it can trigger abnormal heart rhythms, I had a gentleman in his 40s. Um, he was in a in the vicinity of a multi-shooter tragedy, and uh, he ended up having a massive heart attack a few days after the event. Normal arteries, no blood clot, okay? And so emotions are pretty bad. And then, so those are all pretty extreme cases, but you can have, you know, I think about if my dog ran away for an hour and I finally found him, I would be like, just a blibber and mess, okay? I'd be so upset, but I would get a brain injury from that. Now, I wouldn't think, oh, I better tell my doctor about these things, okay? And that's understandable, right? Because the key is we're supposed to all recover from these injuries, and we don't. And the reason why we don't is because people have too much inflammation, all right? So you get these injuries, you have low blood pressure to the brain, your brain's not working right, okay? It's from an injury that you should have recovered from and you probably would have recovered from a couple decades ago when there was much less inflammatory stress in the population, okay? But now you don't and you left a little damage behind and that damage, each injury starts stacking up, boom, 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 boom. Or if you have a big one and a 
doesn't go away, um, you're left with this low blood pressure. Now, what I see very commonly with COVID, COVID is doing this a lot to people, okay? So they get COVID, you have this big surge internally of inflammatory stress, and this can happen even if you have mild outward symptoms, okay? And then people, their fever goes away, their cough or headache or whatever, stuff gets better. If it's really mild, it gets better in a few days. And then they start realizing they're struggling a month or two later. And now they're like, I can't, I just can't focus anymore. It was from COVID, okay? Or the emotional trauma or, you know, that little concussion in the garage. That's what happens, okay? Most people don't notice this right away. They think, oh, I just didn't sleep well, or it must be this, or my shoes don't fit, or they, you know, whatever, I got too much stress. And then when it's not getting better, they realize this is a problem. And it's usually further down the calendar, and so they aren't really know what to hook it up to, okay? So, attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, brain fog, chronic fatigue, minor cognitive impairment, all the same thing, all low blood pressure. And what happens? People go get, they're prescribed like Ritalin or Adderall. And what do these drugs do? They're called stimulants, so people think of them like this big cup of coffee, and they do that, okay? But the most important thing they do is they push blood into your brain. They increase the pressure of blood in your head. So now the oxygen can flow correctly into your neurons. That's the most important thing they do. And um, this problem of low pressure in the brain is becoming a huge problem, right? It's so bad, we don't have enough Adderall. Okay, this Adderall shortage, there is an Adderall shortage. And if you've heard about this, it's not because some factory had a problem and they aren't making it. It's because so many people are being prescribed Adderall now because they have low brain blood pressure from injuries they didn't recover from due to inflammation. Now the Nimichek protocol, balancing the gut with rifaximin, high doses of DHA fish oil, olive oil, and vagal stimulation, okay, are all designed to lower inflammation and your brain can repair this. Your brain is fully capable of repairing this, all right? Okay, hope that helps some of you out there. Everybody, take care.